Reviews, and welcome to Strike Reviews. I uh, figured I'd start taking a look at some of the various uh, television shows I've actually been watching late. Um, we're going to be talking about, I just finished up watching the finale of How I Met Your Mother, and warning you now, there will be spoilers. <laughs> it's been over for a bit now, let's, you know, accept that some spoilers are going to happen. So, if you're looking... <laughs> so, here we go. If we're... <laughs> here is your five-second warning, okay? Spoilers after this point. Okay. So, Season 9... Uh, Started off very, it started off promising because we were finally going to get to meet the mother, you know, and that's what we got to see at the end of season eight, which she was actually finally showing up. And, you know, we get this big long thing, and she's. They did the thing they shouldn't have done, which is they made her basically the perfect person, not just for. not just for Ted. But for the group at large, I mean, she, in the course of the season, she all but walks on water, and then they kill her off. <laughs> yeah, that was wonderful. Yeah, you know, let's end our, our romantic sitcom of nine years. <laughs> With putting the character we've already put through needless amounts of pain, such as getting left at the altar, the him and... <laughs> Victoria run where she ends up you know, going to Germany and all this other idiotic crap. And you know, let's just make let's just make the mother a placeholder so that, you know, he can have his kids and and still end up with Robin. And that's what really got me was it was just it was so badly written. You had a lot of potential for this plot where it's like they even went through like a whole thing they, they actually devoted episodes this season to ted getting over robin and moving on with his life and then her pretty much dropping off the face of the earth she wasn't a part of his life really anymore but he loves her so much he has to ask her his he has to apparently go for the world's longest run at his kids with this story that's just that's just depressing <laughs> I, I'm sorry but I, I get what they were going for which was that he gets a second chance at happiness and his love will be his love for Tracy will be eternal and she was really his soulmate but what's that say for Robin she doesn't get a soulmate <laughs> Yeah, see the problem with that one? <laughs> Her happy ending to this story is being the runner-up. Yeah. <laughs> see, this can work as a concept. Like, they handled this, oddly enough, very much better in uh, Safe Haven. Uh, it was a Nicholas Sparks novel converted to movie format, which, oddly enough, the woman who played, <laughs> who played Rachel is in it. Colby uh, Summers, I believe. Um, yeah, she was in it. And it, they handled that essentially the same plot line far better. Um, and it, it just, it gets me that they they went so like... One, this series didn't need that kind of an ending. It, this, this was a series where it's like, yeah... You, you don't always get back together with the person. It doesn't happen, you know. And it just felt like they they were trying to force Rachel to be with to be with Ted without having to back out of anything, um, without having to backpedal or anything. It's it's a problem that writers run into where something will happen early in the story, and if you write organically, this can be a big problem because you can't because if you're writing organically, then you're writing the story as it goes along. And the problem becomes that it kind of snowballs on you. Um, 
this was just not well written. Uh, the, the whole season, essentially, because of how they're ending it, basically you're like, I, I put nine seasons in for this? Really? For an ending that's basically puts us right back at square one for season one, ep one? Yeah, no. <sighs> yeah, they went through and, like, they completely pull Rachel pretty much out of his life. Like, she's there a couple points, apparently, but, you know, she's off globe trotting and, and whatnot. So, and then all of a sudden he just realizes, like, six years after his wife's death and whatnot that he want and they even hold off on them getting married which i don't even understand they just did it for the sake of yeah we're just going to delay on this <laughs> so we never actually get to you know properly see them get married they they kind of gloss over it it's a little bit of a joke but it but with the way they were ending it you really needed to give us more of those moments not you know, slightly depressing stuff about Barney. Um, yeah, and Robin falling more and more out from the group. It just... That really sucked. That just sucked horribly. And... I, I just wish they hadn't, they hadn't gone there. Um... It, it was one of those things where it's like, no, you... They're like, oh, the writing was on the walls. No, it clearly wasn't, because Stella, both Stella and Victoria, were back-up mothers. Yeah, they didn't know they were coming to the end like this. And, no, they rewrote it because of how Colby and Josh Adner interacted. The problem with doing that, though, is that you... I, you you're then basically they went through and did a plot line where she can't have where Rachel couldn't have kids just to you know but by that point they had to have been figuring on putting those two together at the end and so you just kind of wasted our time because you knew for years apparently you were doing this and both Rachel and Tracy, who is, which is the name of the mother, are are given kind of short shrift in this. Uh, if if Tracy had been in for longer, and you know they weren't rushing it to make her appear to be the ultimate woman, to which no other woman can possibly live up to the standard of. <laughs> which they really did like she is the perfect person not just for ted but for lily marshall barney rachel yo oh, yeah yeah she is the perfect person for everyone Ugh, god <sighs> and the thing is they've referred to her and had him referring to her in the present tense before during the series leading up so yeah they, this was clearly a cop-out response to you know split him up and so they could get Rachel and Rachel and Ted together it eh, just ah oh god <laughs> yeah I I just Oh, Christ on a cracker. Um, plus, this was a sitcom. You're not looking for this at the end of a sitcom, where Barney, apparently, all that character growth and stuff he had, yeah, that was just crap. Um, the, the only thing that makes him it all better is apparently he has a daughter and really connects with her but we don't really get to see much of that it's like a quick thing and it's just there to be there 
like no no look see he's he's really he he did learn yeah we can't actually show it because we devoted an entire season to <laughs> building up a relationship that we just pulled the plug on but you know and that's the thing is it, and you see where that's going yeah it's I just it felt like they were they were just trying to force it too much at the end there and that ended up killing them uh, really wanted better out of the end of the series it's it's not it's not fucking horrible but the thing is that it could have been a lot better than this there was no good reason for for doing it like this this was a uh, this is just a thing where you, you kind of have to sit there and be like, but how does everybody, and it, you kind of you kind of sit there. You're like, it, really, this was the best ending. She was a placeholder. She was only there to help facilitate having kids. So that he could then be with Robin guilt free. And so that nothing had to be retconned. I, I mean, at a certain point, you're just. Eh. So I'm probably not going to do how I met your dad. I'm just. I don't want to see another span out like this for that kind of an end. Um, then, you know, I'm, I'm still happy with, like, some shows, uh, like, there are shows that I loved the ending of. They did a great job. Like, I, I liked DS9's ending. It was, it wasn't happy, but it was a definitive end, and it, it fit with the rest of the show leading up to it. It didn't you know, just suddenly be like, yeah, we're just going to pull a couple last minute shenanigans that, to just try and sort of sweep things under the rug. That <sighs> Damn, this could have been so much better. <sighs> damn, damn, damn. <laughs> now, I've, I've been following this uh, series since it first, since it first debuted. Uh, and it really did start to show its age. I think they really should have stuck with Victoria for it and called it because it she was really it. Like she wasn't perfect, but she was she was definitely good, and she definitely had she definitely had her moments. Um, she was definitely good for Ted, and that would have that would have been something to see. And they just you know. And then the whole thing with Stella, where it was like, and then, yeah, it was just, they put, but because of the way they did it, they put him through this absolute and utter hell run of relationships. There's not one relationship of his, aside from Robin, and even that kind of tanked spectacularly. Uh, there's there's none of them that, that don't leave you just beaten down. And the whole Robin thing is returning to the same thing that hasn't worked any other time he's done it. <laughs> All that, oh yeah, I'm over you, I'm, I, I, I don't love you that way anymore. Yeah, that was apparently bullshit, because apparently more than a decade and a half removed from, a decade removed from that point, still has feelings for it. Yeah. And he said that before getting with, getting together with Tracy. So you, you're still stuck at that same point. You're still stuck going, why? Why was this a thing? Uh, oh, well. Uh, hopefully we get some spare stuff. I've got some... 
Oddly, I was, I'm getting some anime where I'm getting some good endings. I, I gotta start having chats about that stuff. But anyway, all right. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and see you for the next Strike Reviews.